Sportsman Against Hunger. And you had mentioned mm -hmm. earlier in this conversation, you had mentioned the um, the you mentioned venison funding or f feeding the needy or something like that. And I assume that's the program mm -hmm. you're alluding to. Um, can you kind of talk to me about the state of that situation right now? Yeah. So explain what the program is for anyone who doesn't know, and then explain. Yeah. So yeah. It's a little in the weeds, but I feel it's important to make the distinction. So in 2005 the legislature passed a bill creating sportsmen against hunger uh, through the Department of Natural Resources. They were given the authority to contract with a 501c3 nonprofit for the distribution of donated venison. Michigan Sportsmen Against Hunger, founded in 1991, is that 501c3 that the department has contracted since 2005. They're largely funded in Michigan through donations, uh, when you go buy a license at the point of sale, they're supposed to ask yeah. you a question. Do you want to donate to Michigan Sportsman Against Hunger? That's where almost all their funding comes from. Uh, and basically uh, what they do is they in, in, enroll processors into the program. So then you can take your deer to a participating processor, drop it off. It gets it turned into ground, ground venison and distributed to food banks, churches, however, homeless shelters, homeless shelters. Um, to feed needy families across Michigan. It's donated millions of pounds of food and, and millions of warm meals for families since its inception. So That's beautiful. And Ed, for, um, I, real quick, I'll jump in real quick. The distinction, because yeah. commercial deer harvest is illegal. So commercial deer harvest is where you know companies come in, sharpshooters come in, wipe out a bunch, process them, and then sell the meat. That is illegal because, the number one, we, we don't think the resource can sustain it long term. Although right now our harvest numbers are so low, possibly because of the bait ban, but that's besides the point. Uh, but the the um, the harvest numbers are low right now. Um, but what this program allowed was for hunters that bought licenses that used the license to hunt the deer and then took that deer and then donated it. And what you have to understand is you may – that sounds a little commercially, and this is – I'm only saying this distinction because I've gotten some pushback from people on the program, which was shocking to me. Um, but one of the things that I want to get people to understand is we have to harvest this year's surplus in order to make room for next year's fawns. There will always be more deer born, but there won't be more habitat. And right now, even with the Sportsman Against Hunger program – we're not even hitting those numbers right now. We're not harvesting enough deer. This year was one of the worst years we've seen in a long time. So we have to harvest more deer. That's not me saying we should do it commercially. It's saying that we should get more people involved in hunting deer and that that, you know, that excess harvest, uh, and it also encourage people that do hunt, maybe buy an extra tag and get one and then turn that deer into this program so that it can help feed the needy. So I just wanted to kind of buffer that because that's I, I couldn't believe it but i've been getting a lot of pushback on it recently yeah i mean on principle it's it's an amazing program and it, it's had great success in the past to encourage you know our michigan hunters to take that that doe take that deer and help manage the population when justin can jump into kind of some of the pitfalls we've been experiencing lately but a lot of it is just a lack of processors that can take these deer if you don't have one locally after you've bought your doe tag after you've been in the woods and then you want to try and donate this it's getting more cumbersome for our hunters to actually donate those 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 deer and then you know turn that into a warm meal for a needy family and so we've been taking some action and doing some things on the ground here to make sure that 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 program is revitalized or well funded at the same time yeah that's kind of what i was interested in because even when we've taken what started this question for me was i took my deer to a processor this year when i went in to take this deer in to have it processed they had said to me I asked him about the Sportsman Against Hunger, and they said they don't do it. They had too much trouble collecting the money for the processing. That's what they said to me. So then I heard that from another processor. The same thing was, well, we never get compensated for the processing, and we do it at a discount, and it ends up hurting us, and we get backed up. And the third problem, another one, because we cold called. We're crazy. We cold called uh, butchers. And the third person told me that they didn't have the freezer space. That it was uh, taking up too much room, so I guess that those are the those are the three yeah. things that I've run into personally. Uh, nothing that you said is unique to those individual processors. Right. I would be lying to you if I told you that the state of the program was exceptionally strong. Um, rather, I'm going to tell you that it, it needs help, frankly, um, and a lot of the issues that you mentioned are the reasons that it's having trouble now. 
the reason I made the distinction about Sportsman Against Hunger, the statutory program, and Michigan Sportsman Against Hunger, the 501c3, is because we're actively seeking more money for the department to purchase refrigerated trailers, increase the payments to processors, and shipping for disease testing costs for the statutory program that the department would then use with the 501c3. So it's not, money doesn't go to the 501c3 directly. It has to go through the department for statutory reasons. So we're asking for that money to try and alleviate some of what you're talking about. Uh, processors that enroll in the program, I, I think the numbers, they get paid like 80 bucks a deer. But if you take in a deer to get a process, it's probably a buck and a quarter. At least, uh, maybe hundred. At least, bucks. probably more. Yeah. So they're missing out on money there. So why why would a processor want to take a you know forty percent pay cut? I mean, yes, it, it, it's the charity aspect of it, but at the same time, they're running a business. Another big problem that happened for your listeners that are out of Michigan: opening day of archery season in Michigan is October first. On September 16th last year, the department came out with some new policies regarding venison donation, mandating that they need to be CWD, bovine tuberculosis tested, and lead screened. And even lead screened. Lead screened, nice. And two two weeks before bow season. So, I mean, actually, the youth hunt had already happened at that point, and the following day, the early antlerless season was going to start. I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone that says those aren't things that or those are things we we shouldn't do. We we probably should be doing those screening. Um, the implementation left almost everything to be desired at that point, and that stressed the program beyond those other issues because now processors initially couldn't even process the deer until it was tested. Then the policy was changed that they could process the deer and had to store it and keep it until it was tested. So the freezer space became a huge issue in that point. At that point, I had heard anecdotal stories. I, I never verified this personally. That process was returning away deer or discarding donated meat because they didn't have the storage capacity for the regular paying customers. Um, again, I heard those stories. I don't know if it's true. Sure. So the program it needs some help. So the first thing people can do is push that button when you buy your licenses here in Michigan. Spend the dollar or whatever that it asks for. I think it asks for um, an hour. Because yeah, anything in excess of what they currently have in the budget or from those donations to pay for the program has to come out of game and fish, which then is affecting the management of deer and every other species that the department manages. So check that box, give them a dollar. Um, but, but we're working really hard to get some general fund investment from the legislature into that program to ease some of those pressures, pay the processors kind of a fair market rate provide some refrigerated trailers for when they're, you know, the busiest times of the year or in the summer, if a farmer or a group of farmers is going to go out and do a call under their, their deer management permits. Um, so th those are, those are the things we're working on with that. It, the program needs help. It is a fantastic program. It is something that we are working exceptionally hard on here in the state in conjunction with a lot of our deer partners, um, you know, NDA, the Michigan bow hunters, um, it was not included in the governor's budget, but the department is helping as much as they can, um, at least on technical questions and things like that, since they can't actively stump for something um, that's not included in that budget. Right. I, I guess for me, it sounds like there is a plan should the funding come in. It sounds like you guys at least know what to do to solve it. Yeah, they've understood yeah. those stop gaps and those those you know those speed bumps that you were talking about with freezer space, the the payment value of it as well. But also too, like the third piece is how do we streamline that testing process? You can't have deer hanging for weeks at a time and taking up freezer space because that just you know exacerbates that other point of the issue. So we're trying to work in in a in a very holistic manner to get all the problems solved. The biggest piece right now is that funding component. So as it was said, it was left out of the governor's budget. We're really lobbying hard to get that back into the budget so that at least we're not at a worse place than we were last year, but we're continuing to move forward and build the program and continue to to talk about the value of this that, you know, Hunters donate millions of pounds of meat to millions of families that, that need this food. And so what a great PR piece to say, hey, we increased that value. We increased those donations. We fed more people. And now they're able to, you know, make more harvest, feed more people. So there's, there's such a process to this. But, you know, as was said, we're working extremely hard here to do that. I, I pitched it as a double benefit, too, because when people talk about dough management, particularly in the southern third of the state, where we do not, where we have an excess of deer and we, we need to harvest specifically more antlerless deer. Um, I view sportsmen against hunger as an important doe management tool. And 
Then the other side of it, though, is the money that we're asking for is a fairly cheap investment on the humanitarian side of things, ensuring that there are hungry families that don't need to be, they don't have to be hungry anymore. Yeah, and um, by so, the way, so it's really a double benefit there. And by the way, they're being fed the most nutritious, healthy protein on the face of the earth. No yep. antibiotics, nothing. Right. I mean, just absolute gorgeous meat.